The woman is the first to give him trouble, followed soon afterwards by the man. 2. At the beginning he has a perfectly clear idea of who the woman is. She is tall and graceful. By conventional standards she may not qualify as a beauty, but her features, dark hair and eyes, high cheekbones, full mouth, are striking, and her voice, a low contralto, has a suave, attractive power. Sexy? No. She is not sexy, and certainly not seductive. She might have been sexy when she was young. How could she not have been with a figure like that? But now, in her forties, she goes in for a certain remoteness. She walks, one notices this particularly, without swinging her hips, gliding across the floor, erect, even stately. That is how he would sum up her exterior. As for herself, her soul, there is time for that to reveal itself. Of one thing he is convinced. She is a good person, kind, friendly. 3. The man is more troublesome. In concept, again, he is perfectly clear. He is a Pole, a man of seventy, a vigorous seventy, a concert pianist best known as an interpreter of Chopin, but a controversial interpreter. His Chopin is not at all romantic, but, on the contrary, somewhat austere. Chopin as inheritor of Bach. To that extent he is an oddity on the concert scene, odd enough to draw a small but discerning audience in Barcelona, the city to which he has been invited, the city where he will meet the graceful, soft-spoken woman. But barely has the pole emerged into the light, then he begins to change. With his striking mane of silver hair, his idiosyncratic renderings of Chopin, the Pole promises to be a distinct enough personage, but in matters of soul, of feeling, he is troublingly opaque. At the piano he plays with soul, undeniably. But the soul that rules him is Chopin's, not his own. And if that soul strikes one as unusually dry and severe, it may point to a certain aridity in his own temperament. 4. Where do they come from? The tall Polish pianist and the elegant woman with the gliding walk. The banker's wife, who occupies her days in good works. All year they have been knocking at the door, wanting to be let in, or else dismissed and laid to rest. Now, at last, has their time come? 5. The invitation to the pole comes from a circle that stages monthly recitals in the Sala Monpou in Barcelona's Gothic Quarter, and has been doing so for decades. The recitals are open to the public, but tickets are expensive and the audience tends to be wealthy, ageing and conservative in its tastes. The woman in question, her name is Beatrice, is a member of the board that administers the series. She performs this role as a civic duty, but also because she believes that music is good in itself, as love is good, or charity, or beauty. And good, furthermore, in that it makes people better people. Though well aware that her beliefs are naive, she holds to them anyway. She is an intelligent person, but not reflective. A portion of her intelligence consists in an awareness that excess of reflection can paralyse the will.